What's going on, my fellow know-it-alls? This is Mr. Know-it-all, and you have reached the Mr. Know-it-all channel. So we're going to talk about the Wheel of Time. Now, I've been reading the Wheel of Time books uh, since I was much younger. In 1990, the books came out. Uh, I didn't actually get my hands on them until about 2000, and I started reading the series with it. The series is based on a book series. Uh, the TV series from Amazon is based on a book series by a writer named Robert Jordan. Now, Robert Jordan is arguably one of the grandfathers or big daddies of modern day fan high fantasy novels. He's kind of the modern version of what J.R.R. Tolkien was back in the day. So, well, let's get to talking about the series. One of the things that I immediately noticed about the series is that the show itself is very much different from the actual series. Now, those of you who know or don't know, uh, Robert Jordan had written the books up to a certain point, and then ultimately, when he passed away, uh, he uh, the books were his wife, who was also an editor, ended up handing it off to another writer named Bra uh, Brandon Sanderson. Brandon Sanderson is also an equally talented writer. He did an amazing job finishing off the series, and I definitely think that um, anyone who begins to read the series, when you end the series, I believe fully, you're going to love and enjoy it. Now, Barring if you're, I'm not one of those people who says, you got to read the books. You got to read the books. Look, man, I wish you would read the books, but let's talk about this TV show. So one of the things that I noticed immediately about the TV show is that uh, uh, there are definitely differences. <clears throat> I've heard something about backlashes and whatnot, and I really haven't experienced any of that to this point, at least uh, from the standpoint of um, I don't, I'm not bumping into anything. So immediately out the gate, uh, there were some ethnicities that have been added and some of those elements. Uh, none of that, I didn't hit any of that. I didn't bump into any of that. I'll be honest, I did think most everybody was going to be some form of European-esque type uh, culture. Uh, I knew that certain ones like the Aiel and some of the other great uh, races and cultures that we're going to see in the series are uh, were uh, they just the way Robert Jordan describes them very much speaks to the various cultures in our world. So it's easy to kind of see the, the, the Gildan as being somewhat Persian ish or being uh, things like that or the people from Tyr being a little more uh, 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 <laughs> Spanish. Thank you. That's the word. And so, again, a lot of those a lot of this stuff has to do with your take on what you th what you thought in your mind's eye about the series. Now, the other thing is I read the whole thing, but I've also listened to the audiobooks at least several times. So, uh, and the, the voice actors chose certain accents when they were doing the series. And so again, I have a lot of those preconceived notions in my head. So what have I done? Same thing I did years ago. Uh, when the Ghostbusters movie came out, the female led one in 2016, I took my presuppositions, balled them up, crumbled them up and chucked them away because to my way of thinking, you have to take every iteration of a thing on its head. Oh, but you know, Mr. Know-it-all, I can't believe you would say something like that. I mean, what are you trying to say that we shouldn't like have our fandoms and blah, blah, blah. Hang on. You right now watch the MCU. And for those of us who have read comic books and who love the MCU, uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe is nothing like the comic books. Aside from the costumes and the names and some of the powers, some, it literally is this exact same process. So I'm not even going to entertain that conversation and I'm going to kind of move on to the next step. I hadn't, I've never bumped into, I haven't bumped into, and by bumped into, I mean, when I'm watching the series, does something slam me hard? Now, in contrast, <clears throat> watching Star Trek Discovery, I am constantly bumping into all of the various differences. Now, I've little by little begun, they, <laughs> That's right. They've worn me down like a good uh, mind numbing brainwashing. They have not, they have totally worn me down anyway. I'm so I'm starting to see the series a little differently, but on its head, that's what I was originally afraid was going to happen when I started wa reading, uh, watching rather the wheel of time series on Amazon. I was worried and concerned that as I got into it, I was going to find myself going, Oh my goodness, what is all this? I can't believe it. This isn't my show. I, none of that. I don't bump into any of that. In fact, the thing I was worried about is actually the thing that they're not doing, and I'm so happy. What I was worried about was I, 
First, I want to go on record as saying I love Robert Jordan. I love the books he wrote. I love how he wrote. I don't have an issue with any of it. Brother could be long-winded. <laughs> okay. Let's just – I'm just going to call a spade a spade. Let's be real. He definitely knew how to utilize the English language to the fullest. So much so that there are some parts where – I'll be honest, some of the books kind of dragged and it's like he added a whole bunch of stuff and it just took forever to get anywhere. The very first book, I always tell people, if you're going to get into the Wheel of Time series, trudge through the first book. A lot of character building happens and yes, a lot of root stuff is there, but at the end of the day, it's a long slog and I always thought that Eye of the World, that's the name of book one, could completely have been about half as long. Okay, maybe not true. Um, you could have lost about a third of it and just a third of the excess and smooshed it down to a healthier uh, size that would have been a little more brisk in its reading. Uh, and so that was my concern was how in the world we're going to take this long-winded material and boil it down to its best essence. Now, in later books, I don't know how they're going to be able to do the opposite because in later books, it's really intense and very much impactful. But in the current iteration of the series, uh, I'm actually really loving the pacing. Now I've noticed a lot of people online talking about how it's bad, being worried that, oh, no, it's too much. It's this and that. We're going to, you know, the thing's not going to work out right. It's blah, blah, blah. And I remember thinking to myself, shut up, because I'm telling you, it is not an issue. At least not one that I have noticed whatsoever. I'm loving the pacing. I was very worried. And, and what's funny is I'm not even bumping into explanation stuff. Now, you're going to say, but Mr. Know-it-all, you're just sitting here, you know, uh, you're, you know the story. So that's why you're able to look at it like that. Okay. Well, my wife, who, by the way, is not a high fantasy fan. Um, she does like some fantasy in a different light, but um, that's more like witches and fairies and things like that. That's her, that's kind of her flavor fantasy. So for me... Uh, when I sat her down to watch it, I was like, we need to watch the series and just, I need your, I need your clean eyes. She fell in love with it from episode one, never having read the books. And I am debating us doing kind of a read along together, uh, ourselves, just kind of look at it, but either way, she's enjoying the heck out of it. So, uh, this is this first one because I'm late. I apologize. I moved, I had to get the studio set up. And so, uh, but for the most part, when so um, this is going to be an overview of the first few episodes and then week to week, we're going to start doing a, a more uh, simple review breakdown review that actually explores the various uh, episodes in their more entirety. So for right now, we're going to real quick, take a fast look at how they did the series. So uh, the very first three episodes is leave taking shadows waiting and a place of safety. There's also the dragon reborn, which by the way, I don't feel they should have, I feel they should have saved that episode title. That was the most recent episode last week. Now, the very first three episodes takes place, I'm sorry, the first two episodes takes place in a span that really took about two to 300 pages of the first book. Um, in it, we are introduced to the characters of Ran, Matt, Perrin, and Egwene, as well as Nynaeve. Uh, we're also introduced to, to Moiraine Domadred, who's an Aes Sedai. The Aes Sedai are the magic users in this world. Uh, I may very well, and let me know if you need a little more description. I know some other places already have done some online. Um, I may do some breakdowns of the actual books just for the sake of helping everybody kind of have a, a, a groundwork to work from, to go from, and sort of understanding, hey, here's the books, here's some of the stories that you may or may not have experienced um, as a result of those books. Now, that being the case, these first books get us through Moraine and Lan showing up in the two rivers. We're missing a character, by the way, but I, I'll, but I digress. Uh, they get to the, they get to the two rivers, you meet the kids, you understand what's going on. You kind of get the impression there's something up, but at the same time, I don't feel like they made Beltine a big enough part of it. Cause that was a major part of the opening of the book. I would have liked to have seen more of that regardless. Beltine's the festival, uh, very similar to Beltine in real world. Um, and so the only thing that was missing is in the book, there was a little bit of, um, there was, uh, uh, excitement over the fact that oh, there's a gleam in. What's a Gleeman doing in Emmons Field? And so um, Gleeman is played by the character of Tom Merlin. Tom Merlin we meet later on in, I believe it's episode three. And Tom Merlin is a really cool character. He's a Gleeman, also uh, what other fantasy fans might know as a bard. But he's kind of a roguish bard. I mean, I guess bards are 
rogue-ish in their own way. But um, either way, I was really looking forward to seeing that character portrayed a little differently. If I had to say I bump into anything, it's probably that character. Moving on. Um, the storytelling is brisk. However, they are establishing a lot of things quickly and well. The opening scene where they introduce Maureen and they and Lan and you see the red and you understand she's capturing a man who can um, who can uh, wield the one power. They go into all those explanations of what those things are. Um, and I, I didn't, again, I didn't bump into those things. I liked it. I thought it established the storytelling really quickly. I've seen bad fantasy storytelling. I'm also a fan, I'm again, fan of a lot of books. I'm a huge fan of the Terry Goodkind series, The Sword of Truth. Well, back in the early 2000s, um, Sam Raimi Studio came out with a series called um, The Legend of the Seeker. It was essentially the Sword of Truth series in series form, and it was bad. Really bad. So it's one of those things where I do not miss that kind of storytelling, and I'm really happy we've come to the place we are now. Thank you very much, Lord of the Rings, and now thank you very much, uh, The Wheel of Time. So the funny thing is, I actually thought that the series was going to come and go really quickly. I didn't anticipate that it was actually going to solidly land the way it's landed. We heard rumors of movies and another series and things fell through, and next thing I know, poof, there's a trailer, and it looks amazing. So it's one of those things that I was just blown away by. So uh, all that having been said, um, again, the, uh, the the series itself, they get there, they get to Emmons Field, you get to where they're uh, eventually they're attacked by Trollocs. Now, so another part that I that I did bump into was the entire bit about the Murdrail, the the actual guy who runs or the officer, according to IMDb, the officer in charge of the Trollocs uh, for the Dark One, the faceless guy. Or the guy with no, he had a mouth with no eyes, the eyeless ones, they're the, you know, um, their capes are said to never, ever look like they're being touched by the wind or anything like that. Anyways, in the books, they get a little bit more of a run up and you actually find out that Perrin, Matt and Rand had all seen one. And so there's a little bit of a kind of a, a sort of something that says, hey, something's coming. Someone's detected something. The book did a slightly better job setting up the premise that something bad was coming. Um, the series tries to do that a little bit, but it sort of happens really fast and a little bit a little too fast and loose for me. Either way, again, nothing to bump into. Really, again, it's fine. So the Trollocs show up, you see them do their thing. You see more rain, use fire. I'm assuming some form of either bale fire or just fire. Bale fire is a thing in the series um, that we can get into a little bit more into in our further explanation. But man, it is amazing. And the series is unreal. I mean, stupid unreal. So. Uh, I've actually really enjoyed the series itself. The next one you had was called A Place of Safety, and that's where we meet the uh, the Tuatha on Mir or the uh, uh, the Tinkers and the uh, the people with all the colorful carts and whatnot. Essentially, this world's gypsies. They do have a secret that has to do in the future with some other stuff that comes. That's probably my biggest hang up is I constantly find myself having to reel back from accidentally telling my wife spoilers because I'm so like, oh, amazed. Look at this. Look at that person. Look at this and that. You know, when when, uh, when Moraine introduces the Red Aes Sedai and her name is Leandra, I was like, oh, that's Leandra, my goodness. I mean, again, everything is so exciting as you're going through this thing. Um, so then you get to, uh, so in a place of safety, you get Perrin and Egwene and everybody sort of has split up and they're on their own ways. Um, Rand and Matt are going one way. Matt now has the knife that he got from Shatter Logoth, which by the way, Shatter Logoth, brilliantly portrayed. Um, overall, I'm really excited with the direction that they're going in with a lot of this stuff. And then uh, the Dragon Reborn episode has to do with Loghain and how powerful he is. That is one thing that the books did do was mention how Loghain is very powerful. But um, again, later on, See, I'm debating how much to tell it because I don't want to sit here and spoil things that I know from the book because I don't know how the series is going to do it. I will say this. There has been a backlash to some of the story beats changing. Again, I go back to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We're already used to things where story beats change, so I'm not really sure why this is suddenly different and why anybody's bumping into it in the first place. All that being said, um, I felt like... This was an excellent character building and story building episode. You learn about the Greens and you learn about the Green Aes Sedai and you learn about the uh, warders that they have and the bond between Warder and Aes Sedai. And <clears throat> Nynaeve gets to have kind of more interplay with Lan and you sort of see the groundwork 
being laid for what potentially, at least in the books, is a relationship between the two of them in the future. Um, overall, I'm, again, I'm really digging the show, man. I really can't wait to see where they go with this. I think it's going to be a lot of exci- a lot of excitement going on. Again, uh, sub- like and subscribe to the channel. I intend to do a more comprehensive, oh my God, very exciting uh, review per episode, but I wanted to do kind of a starter for my very first official YouTube channel video I want about the Wheel of Time. I don't know what we'll call it. Maybe we'll call this uh, Wheel of Time talk or something. But overall, I, I think that the series itself is doing a really good job. I know they've already gotten a season two pickup. Depending on how fast they're, they're t- they start telling the story or they are telling the story, if it continues in this pace, truthfully, I don't see why they couldn't get to the end of season one and be done with book one. And I'm okay with that. At the end of, se- at the, end of the first book, you find out who the dragon is. You find out what the overall arcing goal of some of the dark one is you intru- you're introduced to some more characters. I love how the dark ones represented. He looks amazing. Overall, I'm excited. And I don't know if I can say overall even more. Either way, dude, check this show out. Thanks so much for joining me. Again, it's Wheel of Time Talk right here from Mr. Know-It-All. Check out our other videos and join us each and every week for the live uh, week in review as we dive deeper into what's going on in the world of pop culture as well as things like your favorite TV shows, your fan shows and whatnot. Also gonna be doing some explanation videos. So, you know, uh, like this video, subscribe to the channel because hey, everyone loves a know-it-all.